let's talk about the close in the UK and across continental Europe. It's a little more than a minute away. Simon Hobbs is here to walk us through not just the progress or lack thereof regarding Greece, uh, Simon, but also the ESM, the fiscal pact, uh, participation in the next round of this yeah. LTRO. There's a lot to watch. There is, and they took a positive view of it. It was a fairly broad-based markup around Europe today. Now, the fact that we're down 60 points on the Dow is pulling those, those bosses back to the flat line as we come to the close in Europe, but they are still showing a, a positive move. Let's just have a look at the top three. Let's have a look at London, um, Paris and, uh, and Frankfurt. There you go. That's the point that I'm making to you. Obviously, the fact that Wall Street's coming down is pulling them down in a contagion sort of way. The French banks were actually doing quite well before we opened up on Wall Street, but they too have had those gains cut. And we've had intervention from the ECB on the Portuguese market today. Very thinly traded, but still we hit a record high on the Portuguese two-year of 21.61%. So the ECB was in bringing those down and on the 10-year as well. 10 million euros, uh, a big problem, 4.2 million euros is what it will cost you to ensure 10 million euros of Portuguese debt. Here we go. The European markets are closing now. So those upfront costs are clearly rising, but again, the markets are relatively thin. That's where we are around Europe at the close. Notice that Spain down there on the, the, the left-hand side is in negative territory. We're waiting for the big banks to have to come through more realizations on their property losses. And of course, Santander moved to that end today. But of course, this is now the end of the month for Europe. Let's just have a look at how those top three markets have traded during the course of the month, not the Euro Swiss franc. Can we have a look at the year to date, the one month move? There we go. Thank you very much. Because, of course, this is picking up, Carl, importantly, on the aftermath of that huge amount, almost half a trillion euros of 1% three-year loans that were pumped into the banks one month from today, or in one month's time, February the 28th, the second bout of that will come through. And there's a debate, you saw it on the front page of the Financial Times today, a debate about how much we think the banks will take from the ECB at the end of the month as they now prepare their collateral and the extent to which that will bolster the banks. The FT is saying, look, some banks at Davos were saying two or three times what they took before. The Reuters has a survey out today suggesting actually it will be far less than the last time round. Let's have a look at that Swiss franc that we showed you a little sneak preview of there. The important thing to say here is that the euro is falling now to levels we've not seen, Carl, in four and a half months. And we are very close, of course, to the sort of level one Swissy 20 at which the Swiss National Bank has said they will draw a line. So will they start intervening at this level? We will see. Back to you. Don't, don't go too far, Simon. I got Pisani down here uh, tanned and rested from Florida. Research. Key <laughs> West is a hotbed of interest Bringing in the European the public crisis. Information. Trust me, uh, I know all about it. Uh, I, and, and Simon gave a very good review of the, what happened in, in Europe. But you know what the best performing sector, uh, best performing country was? Guess. Greece. Greece. Greece was up, put up the, the board here, Greece was up 17% in January. One trade equipped to me, as goes January, so goes Papademos, <laughs> is our new slogan that we're going to have for the January it's effect. Because other people other people said the DAX was actually the one to watch. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. We'll there see. you go. Uh, by the way, the trader talk over the weekend was shifting from uh, the private sector cuts in Greece to public sector debt cuts. A lot of people saying the ECB and others are going to have to take some cuts. They don't want to. They're going to have to. And more international systems. 130 billion is still not enough. The numbers keep getting more and more elusive for Greece here. Mr. Mr. Juncker, the head of the Eurogroup, Prime Minister of, of Luxembourg, said he would not rule out a public sector haircut for Greek debt. So there's the door getting open for all of this. Meantime, you look down here at the markets. We've been drifting south. That consumer confidence number at 10 o'clock really took the sales, uh, the winds out of the sales here. We also had some disappointment, a little bit of disappointment on ExxonMobil's earnings, and that's been weighing on it because it's such a big stock. It's been weighing on the energy sector. So some of the big energy names are all down. That, of course, is weighing on the Dow there. You see down two points there almost. That's about uh, 15 points uh, in the Dow. Also weighing is some disappointment on the Case Shiller Home Price Index. Home builders have had a great run in January, and they have been down here today on some disappointment. They were down, I think, 19 out of 20 uh, cities that they surveyed. And it's been down now three months in a row, the overall index. Finally, I just want to note the uh, NYSE Deutsche Börse merger. I think David mentioned this in the last hour. It really is crunch time. 
time now. Tomorrow, the EU commissioners, 27 of them, are going to give their opinion, a yes or no. Now, they're, in theory, they're all going to vote, and it's a majority vote. In reality, this is the European Union. None of this actually happens. Everything's done by consensus. So they'll announce, presumably tomorrow, they will announce thumbs up or thumbs oh, down. Hang on a minute. Go ahead. Well, you would expect that. If, the, if your competition commissioner comes through with hundreds and hundreds of staff after a huge amount of effort looking into it and says, we think we should vote against it, nobody else in that cabinet is going to go, oh, no, I'm really best friends with the NYSE or Deutsche Börse. I, I tell you what, let's go, let it go through. <laughs> this is cloud cuckoo land. That any of those m and people think that, that the commission is going to... So you're saying that the deal's dead? Get crazy talk. Well, well of course. It, it, look, nobody thinks the deal is going through at this point. I mean, even, even the optimists have 20% uh, going through it. I'm, I'm simply stating the fact here. The fact but is... Nidera, but even Niederauer, even the fact that he's raising it seems really very, very odd. Uh, I don't think it's odd at all. Look, the point is this. Tomorrow, they're going to have an option. They're going to make an announcement, presumably tomorrow. The NYC can appeal the decision, or it can simply announce that the deal is over. And by the way, I've been asked this several times. If it is blocked because of the anti-merger uh, uh, um, commentary, there is no breakup deal. There is no breakup fee that is sure. paid. I've asked, been asked that several times. That's not going to happen. Can so, I just, go ahead. Can I just circle back for one minute before we, we, we lose the European close here uh, to say, you know, there may be a positive spin on what happened last night at the summit because right. the permanent bailout mechanism has come through and also because Angela Merkel's worked up some sort of fiscal compact that keeps her happy and therefore the Germans may give more money. But there is still this real division politically with Greece. Really, you know, they kept the Greek prime minister behind after everybody left. Did you see last night? Yeah. He did his news conference at half past one in the morning. And what is quite clear with the sort of comments that Sarkozy and Merkel were saying is there isn't the discipline in their view in Greece in order to give them that extra bailout and to pay those bills that are due yeah. in March. We've got a huge issue, a yeah. huge issue to surmount here, Bob. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, you made a good point there, Simon. And I think the turning point here and why I'm saying that public sector debt cut is now very important uh, and additional help, it happened over the end of last weekend when there was talk of a budget SAR, when Germany floated the concept of a budget SAR for Greece. That blew up everything. That made the emphasis very clear that they've got to deal with the, the, the overall budgetary crisis that they've got there and not just more. Yeah. Um, don't go away because I'm curious to know and Gary, I'd like your opinion too, why there seems to be a lack of the month end buying. Uh, is, that, is that absence wait, wait, that's, wait, 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 call. That is a polite way of you asking why is it not window dressing and marking up, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, Cool Breeze, you know, uh, Bob was talking earlier about some of the dispersion among those European markets and sort of the junkier ones having the outperformance. I think there was a lot of anticipation for this to continue into today, but look at this chart, and I think this may be part of the answer call. Uh, sometimes a picture is just worth a thousand words, right? Bad, bad use of a cliche, but uh, Tim Bagshaw sent me this this morning, and wow, you gotta look at this. This is the most shorted stocks on the Russell 3000 names. Uh, in our chart, it's the blue line. Performance, January, and then look at the Russell 3000. This was active hedge fund investors targeting those stocks with the biggest short positions to try to create the performance. Does something like that last throughout the year? Typically, no. But this shows you coming out of the gates after a very subpar performance year, boy, does this articulate perfectly in a picture what we've had for the month of January. Co correlation, you're right, correlation is very high there, Gary. Let me just address the volume no, no, issue. Bob, 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 that, that is deal, not correlation. The Bob. Deal has had is the volumes have not picked up. Bob. Neither in Europe nor here. Bob, the Bob. volumes remain anemic at the NYSE. They never picked up in January. A lot of people were thinking this was going to be an aberration. We'll see it. But it hasn't happened, and that's been a major problem. We're not seeing it towards the end of the month. Four billion shares a day is the average consolidated hey, volume. In fact, below that, that's that's pretty anemic. Bob, Bob, I, I, yes, I, I, maybe I just want to take a look at this chart again, because you mentioned about correlation. This is this is actually quite the opposite. What this is showing you is that the, the stocks that were the most shorted names in the Russell 3000 essentially outperformed the Russell 3000, the index as a whole by two to one over the month of January. So in fact, this is the opposite of that being a correlated market, much like we had seen last year. This is essentially, I read this chart to basically say, big active hedge funds targeted those with short positions, knowing that they could generate 
the alpha performance that they've done here over the last month. So it's five there, just so we're reading this correctly, Gary. Five there, it looks like where we're at uh, in the in the Russell 3000, but nine, it looks close to nine, nice close to 10 with right, the most five, shorter names. The Russell, That's your point Ru about almost twice the alpha. Ru Russell 3000 up about 5% right. year to date through today, obviously Got down it. a little bit this morning. Those were the most shorted names in the Russell 3000, twice that performance. Interesting. That's, a, that's an amazing. Out. That is an amazing picture. Uh, thank you very much, Tim Bashaw, for flagging me with that amazing picture. Of what happened over the last month? Yeah, and then you look at Netflix and Sears, some of the biggest gainers of the year. Yeah, it it makes right a out. lot of sense. Thanks, Gary. Let's uh, bring in Rick Santelli in Chicago, who uh, can address either the data we got here today, Rick, or what's going on in Europe. Well, I think it's some of the data today, but I also think it is Europe. Remember, you know, Friday there was a lot of jubilation that we were just, you know, within a fingertips touch of getting the details on Greece. And maybe that's true, but it, once again, we're a fingertip touch away. And I think that confidence, yes, maybe it's one of these feel-good indices, but that was a marked reversal from previous levels. Chicago purchasing manager, manufacturing. I'm enamored with some of the progress in manufacturing, but I'd certainly like to see the service sector, you know, have the same type of numbers, the bigger parts of the economy. And I think when it comes to Europe, when I hear all the traders on this floor, their predominant question today was, when's the next LTRO, you know, the long-term repo operation? That's enough information. That's what I need because we're replacing toxic paper with loans in Europe and it stabilized the situation. But what comes next? Back to you. Uh, maybe another LTRR. We'll, uh, we'll see. Thanks, Rick. Uh, see you in a bit. Let's bring in fast money trader Joe Terranova with Virtus Investment Partners. Hey, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, Carl. How are you? Um, good. Although we're hearing the term short squeeze thrown a lot, around a lot today. We're hearing about inventory stocking at, uh, in the GDP number. Is there a chance January was all a ruse? Well, call me simplistic. I think when you go back to last week and you're actually managing some money and you're trading in the markets and you get Apple with spectacular earnings and a Federal Reserve that tells you risk is on, we want you to go own risk assets, but you can't get subsequent price appreciation. That has to make you somewhat cautious. This has been an Apple rally, and it appears as though this week this market cannot extend upon what we had in terms of positive news on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week. So we're back to utilities and healthcare. I think it's a very cautious environment. The reversal today in oil is interesting. If we lose oil, which it looks like we are, that's a big contributor to S&P appreciation. I think, again, you have to be cautious and watch out for tomorrow. Yesterday's lows rather potentially being taken yeah. out. Pretty decisive turn at 1318 uh, this morning, although we're also hearing uh, the technicians say every time a January is up 4% plus, the year is up uh, so often by double digits. Do you trust it? Absolutely not. I mean, th this, this is a new world. It's a new paradigm. Traders are navigating through so much uncertainty. We're making decisions a lot quicker than we did in the past. No, the world is different now. Maybe it works again, but the one time that it doesn't work, I don't want to be exposed to that thesis. Yeah, we got to throw out a lot of those uh, yes. long-standing uh, traditions. Thanks, Joe. We'll see you soon. See you. Uh, don't forget, as we're watching, a little more than two hours into the trading day, home prices falling more than expected, seven-tenths of a percent in November, according to S&P Case-Shiller. National home prices are near levels seen in 2003. Video game maker THQ may be kicked off NASDAQ's exchange if it can't boost its share price over the next six months. Company shares have traded below a dollar a share for 30 straight sessions. It has until mid-July for its shares to close above a dollar for at least 10 sessions in a row. And Korean re retailer Elan Group confirming it's part of a consortium that's among shortlisted bidders in the auction for the L.A. Dodgers. The move could help the company expand further in the sportswear business. Well,